snakes. For over 100 million years, they have slithered their way across the face of the earth. But recently, they have conquered a profoundly different environment. The ocean. That invasion has taken place in the blink of an evolutionary eye. Now, over 50 species of these cold-blooded intruders have colonized the world's tropical seas. Feared by bathers and divers, their venom is among the most toxic of any creature. But much about them is a mystery. What made them abandon the land? The search for clues leads to an extraordinary place that is the sea snake capital of the world and reveals the very private lives of these serpents of the sea. It's as if the sea snakes appeared overnight. Their origins remain shrouded in mystery. The best guess is that they evolved from land snakes about five million years ago. Those that have been studied, like the yellow-lipped sea crate, remain shy and secretive. Sea crates are known from coastal Asia to the Pacific and are most easily found in the waters of Fiji. Mambualao is one of the small, uninhabited coral caves of the island group. The warm, shallow waters provide a rich hunting ground for marine predators. Although they have abandoned the land, the sea crates have kept some reminders of their earthly past. They are air breathers. But a few quick breaths are enough to sustain 30 or 40 minutes stalking among the coral crevices. To most reef fish, sea crates pose no threat. Eels are what they seek. Near the surface, they're vulnerable to sea eagles. In defense, the sea crates employ a unique kind of camouflage. The bands on their skin create an optical illusion. They appear to move in the opposite direction to the snake itself. In the moment of confusion, the snake can escape. As well as breathing air, the sea crates have retained other legacies from their terrestrial past. When not hunting, they must return to land. The rugged coral of Mambualao is the first obstacle they meet on their mission. The coral is not just dangerously sharp, Around much of the island, it forms vertical faces and overhangs. But as well as being expert swimmers, sea crates are excellent climbers.
the struggle is vital. Spending time ashore is the only way that these cold-blooded creatures can get enough warmth to digest their food. The journey exposes them to more predators. Many snakes find the journey exhausting. Along the way, ticks burrow beneath their scales. They will stay attached even in water. But like the hermit crabs that find new shells as they grow, the sea crates replace their skins and shed their parasites every four to six weeks. They take these pains not just to get warm, but to satisfy one other undeniable need for the land. This is where they must come to lay their eggs. Like the snakes, their eggs too must breathe. These ties to solid earth have cost the sea crates dearly. There are just five species of these amphibious serpents. Their cousins, the true sea snakes, made a far more successful transition to the ocean and are much more numerous. The story of that transition is still being pieced together. It begins on the continent of Australia. Sea snake evolution began here long ago, in the dry north. This is the environment their ancestors came from. Dry scrub and desert. Reptiles were made for this harsh land. While the abundant sunshine is a free source of body heat, their waterproof skins protect the body's precious moisture from the air. But one more thing has helped Australia's reptiles to multiply. The tropical warmth is ideal for incubating eggs. If the temperature cools, pythons can insulate the clutch with their bodies and even shiver to ensure a steady temperature for the developing young. After two and a half months of careful incubation, the eggs hatch. From this moment on, young snakes receive no more parental care. 20 million years ago, venomous snakes arrived here. The Taipan is the second most venomous snake in the world. One bite from an adult can kill 20 people. Even very young taipans are lethal. From the moment of hatching, they're armed for the kill. Such powerful venoms probably evolved to act on the slow metabolisms of the reptiles and marsupials that were so abundant in this land. The effect on mammals, like this cane field rat, is swift and sure. <laughs> 